So this is not going to be how to play each specific push map. I am going to be doing new guides and all of the new maps, uh, even the brand new one, which I haven't played much at all yet. Uh, but that will come in the future. I'll give you a, there's a couple of details in here I'll talk about. For the most part, this is just going to be how to be playing push, period. And the goal of the video, hopefully before if we don't crash, is to discuss the different aspects of push that differ from normal gameplay. I'm not gonna tell you guys full cap and push mode to win. Everybody obviously knows those things, right? Like that, 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 like just win the game, right? But I'm gonna try and talk about the things that are unique to push. Basically, TLDR with push. The robot starts starts here. It starts at a midpoint between both spawns. If you're standing next to it, it pushes it, and it's gonna walk, and it's going to push this thing forward. Now, this moves very slowly, like a payload, little bit by little bit by little bit. The goal is to push it all the way around, up here, through here, and then when you win the push game mode, by either fully completing it, or when time runs out, your number at the top, I assume you guys can see my mouse here, your number is higher than their number when the time runs out. Now, a couple of questions. One that I know it's gonna be asked is no, the robot does not heal you. The robot does not heal you. It is not like a payload in Overwatch 1 or Overwatch 2. It does not heal you for the 10 healing per second. And unlike payload in Overwatch 1 or 2, having multiple people on the payload does not speed up the payload at all. One person on the payload, it is moving at max speed. One person on the robot, it is moving at max speed. In payload, two people is slightly faster. Three people is slightly faster than two people. And that's it. Overwatch 2 push, one person on the robot, he's moving as fast as he can. The other thing to keep in mind is that when you're initially pushing this barrier, the barrier goes really, really, really slowly. But like, let's say this, like let's say this guy pushes the robot, it pushes the barrier all the way to here, and then you lose the team fight, and the enemy team starts to push the robot back. Well, guess what? He's not pushing your barrier, he's just walking and he moves really, 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 really fast. Again here, a lot of people in lower ranks will immediately roll out immediately to the bot. They wanna get that initial car that the robot push. But, a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, I want you guys to remember that if we direct your attention to this Overwatch League game here, the robot doesn't immediately unlock. So just like just like uh, con uh, control points, like right King of the Hill, there's no reason to immediately go to the robot. See this? Robot unlocks in 25, 24. So what you can do have is you have 30 seconds to fight for positioning before the robot even unlocks, right? So the robot can't move even if you win the fight. But even more than that, if you go to something like a new Queen Street, even if the robot's unlocked, you might let the enemy team push a little bit just to make sure that you win control of this high ground positioning right here. So this is one of those positions where a lot of the times, a lot of teams in lower ranks will go straight to the robot, but it's better to fight for the big powerful positioning early on first, win this, and then if you win the fight, you're going to be able to push the robot a lot. If you go to a really bad position to try and push the robot, ironically, that might be the worst thing that you could do because you're more likely to lose the fight and therefore not be able to push the robot as much. The key thing um, is being able to pick and choose your fight location. So we talked about how you have to find the balance between min-maxing your robot push and picking the best location for you fighting uh, a fight. For example, here it's really easy. The robot's right there, fight here, fight for the good position here. But then as the fights start to move, it gets a little tricky. For example, if you're defenders, would you fight here? Or would you give them the put, let them push all the way to here where you have a really, really nice corner to use? Will you let them push the robot to here so that you can use high ground? Or will you drop off of your high ground to contest the robot sooner? Do you see what I'm saying? Same thing goes with Coliseo. Fighting here, no big surprise. It's not. There's no real significant advantage here. But then we talked about this earlier. Do you want to stop the robot here, or do you want to actually use the high ground easier and let them push it all the way to here? I'm pretty sure you can even contest from these high grounds in Coliseo as well. Do you want to stop the robot all the way over here, or do, as you defenders want to use this choke and these angles here? So it's always about the balance. It's very important you understand what fight locations are best and whether you're willing to give up more robot push or whether you're willing to stop it. Let's talk a little bit about cap, okay? So capping is when you push the robot from this position here, and you're gonna see all the push have all the push maps have specific sections like this that are called cap. When the robot caps, 
The robot's gonna do about, I think it's about an eight second animation um, where he's just gonna sit, he's gonna scratch his butt, you know, he's gonna sit around, he's gonna, and then he's gonna start pushing again. So the reason why getting this cap matters so much is a couple of reasons. One, while he's animating, you can leave him alone and do other things. So the person that has to push cart or push robot, excuse me, doesn't need to push robot anymore. You can then go help in the fight for this seven to eight seconds. In addition to that, it unlocks better respawns for you that are closer to the uh, the fight. So if we go here, uh, your initial respawns, if I, be I believe, are, let's move this here, the start of the game mode are way, 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 way over here. But if you push your robot all the way to that cap that we showed, 67 meters, let's say you're team blue, and you push it all the way to that cap right there from this position here, then you unlock the respawns that are here. Now this doesn't seem significantly closer, and it's not, but it is a major advantage. It allows you to snowball things a little bit faster to get a better respawn, and it allows your eighth or fifth player that has to push the robot, he doesn't care about it anymore. Um, once you get the cap once, let's say you push the robot to this position, once it's there, it no longer freezes anymore. It goes right over it. There's no longer butt scratching animation. He just zooms right past it. And as soon as he passes it, you get your good response again. If the robot resets, listen carefully. If the robot resets, the enemy team pushes it back to zero again, and it resets it at this point, you lose your good response. You lose your respawn advantage here, and it goes back to your old crappy respawns from back here. So that's why cap matters. It's not just the animation time of the butt scratch and that opens up time to do other things. It's a respawn advantage that you gain that you need to maintain. Getting cap really matters. It allows you to snowball easier. One other thing I want to mention as well is in a way of balancing out the powerfulness of getting the cap and preventing it from being snowballed too early, I want you guys to pay very close attention to this timestamp here. Watch Sassin on the enemy team's respawn timer, okay? Can you guys see that? So we're on Sassin. Val Shengdu is about to cap, okay? Shengdu's pushing. Three, look at this. Two, one. They've capped. Sassin's dead. Do you see the timer here? Do you see how it's moving from left to right? Okay. Look at that. Did you just see that jump as soon as they capped? Watch this. Ready? Watch it. Watch it. Boom. I, like, I was even too slow. It goes so fast. It's about five seconds, I believe. So it's all the way up there. So what that means is that if you get capped on, if the enemy team caps on you, it sucks because they get better respawns. Ah, oh, shoot. But it's very similar to the 2CP respawn timer from the previous Overwatch one, where if the enemy team cap first point, your respawns on second point were faster. So Valiant's Assassin only has like a five second respawn timer because they cap. So this is there to prevent you if you're losing the cap from getting snowballed too hard. And this doesn't stay, by the way. This is only for the one respawn. If you're dead when it caps, you get it, the bump. Now, if Valiant dies after this, for example, if, okay, they've got the cap, GG's, all right. If Sassin dies now, or Langsa, or Molly, or anybody else dies now, they don't get the five second super, super respawn, right? That would be silly. They get the old crappy 10 respawn. This only affects if you were are dead when the cap happens. For example, you can also see it when they get the cap here. Dia also gets a small little, well, actually, actually Dia doesn't get a boost. That, that may be worth noting. If you're already past like a certain point, you don't get the respawn but like let's say you just 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 died you will get that five second boom so once you cap it here you then continue to push it up but you're going to notice something about this on all of the push maps right around here it's pretty neutral but once you get to this point here do you notice the high ground defensive advantage do you notice the choke defensive advantage do you notice how all the angles that a defender can hold on you. This is pretty consistent throughout all push modes that as you get close to cap, the defenders get a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger defensive advantage, trying to make it harder to full cap. Trying to make it harder to full cap. They want it to be hard to full cap. Um, so not only is it the respawn advantage, I mean, you get a respawn advantage as an attacker, but the respawns for these guys are way closer, but it's very rare, not very rare, but it's very difficult to hard cap because of the respawn advantage 
and because the map generally favors defenders more. Uh, we won't pull up the Coliseo map just yet, but generally the high ground and chokes uh, favor the defenders, and the same will apply with the new map as well, I guarantee it. The other thing that's really important here as well, let's go back to our Overwatch League POV, is that it is very important whenever you can to try and stop the robot before you lose lead. For example, this fight right here, this fight right here for Valiant, is it super important? Okay, we lost guys, that sucks, but that's okay, we'll get a recontest, no big deal. This fight right here, though, is crucial because we're at a point in time where it's 76 to 61. If Shangdu wins this fight, they get the lead. And getting the lead is so, so, so important because it means that you have to win multiple fights back to back to retake the lead. Not, you don't have to just stop Shengdu from pushing the robot. You also have to stop them from pushing the robot and then re-push it yourself all the way to the neutral zone, all the way to the cap, and then all the way to beat the number they already have you. If Even if Valiant wins this next fight, they have to push the robot. All, like, let's, let's, we'll change it now. Let's go over to the next scene. If they win the next fight, like let's say Valiant stops the payload. Let's, let's go to the equivalent side of the map. Let's say the Valiant stop the payload and they win the fight right here. Okay, they're only behind by 20 meters. Only behind by 25, 30 meters late in the game is really, really bad. Because here's what happens. Shangdu loses the fight, wins, uh, loses the fight here. Valiant wins it. Nice job, guys. Shengdu has close spawns. So Valiant starts to push the robot back, push the robot back, push the robot back, push the robot back. Guess what? Shengdu is right here and ready to recontest them right here. That's fight number two that they have to win in a row. That's okay, guys. We win it. Nice job. Everybody patty check in the back. We push it back, we push it back, we push it back, push, push it back, push it back. Shang now keep in mind, Shengdu has now lost once we cross this neutral zone. They have now lost their good spawns. Push it back, push it back, push it back, push it back, push it back. Shangdu can test for the third time. We have to win. Oh, this one is tough because Shangdu has the high ground. Oh, this is a hard one. Oh, this is sweaty. Oh, this sucks. Oh, oh but, that, but somehow Valiant pulls the miracle and they win it. Great job, everybody. We're so proud of you. Mom's calling. She's super excited. We're all we're doing great, okay? You push it, you push it, you push it. You get the cap. Shangdu instantly respawns, but you get your good response as Valiant. You put now, but now, 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 you've won three fights in a row. Now the robot slows down because now you've reached where you got the barrier last time. You got it to cap last time. So now you got to push the barrier slowly and you get it to basically here. And Shengdu recontests you right before you take the lead. And for you to win or get the lead, you have to win again and now you have to win in a situation where defenders probably have better positioning than you do so if you lose the lead losing this fight right here where you guys had the lead it was 70 to like 50 or 60 and they won the fight and they pushed the robot to here means that you theoretically have to win four fights in a row to take the lead it's the fights where you have to win or the fights where you're going to give up lead Okay, now one last thing about that. It's not the end of the world if it's at like 30 meters to 30 meters. Oh no, we gave up lead, guys. It's, the end. it's just 30 meters. But the higher this number gets, for example, if this becomes like 100, like for example, right now, if Valiant get this, look, look at that. See how Shengdu gets 104 meters, 100, 100, 112? It becomes harder and harder and harder to take the lead back once the number gets higher and higher and higher. The last thing I'll say about push is it has a tendency to be very reverse sweepable. Now, what I mean by that is we talked about how many fights it's going to take for if Valiant if for Valiant to win if Sheng, when Chengdu took the lead, like four fights, right? But remember, over time, respawns matter. So if, for example, right now, Valiant wins this next fight, Chengdu is going to get overtime respawns, which means that Valiant might not have to win four fights to win the map. They might only have to win three. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if, you're, if you have a massive advantage and push, you need to be very careful 
about being sloppy and, and, and screwing around or wasting too many ults or just assuming that you're going to win the fight because if you it can be very snowbally in overtime because of the nature of the respawns.